So, Marintosh, how are you today? Good, 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 good. So, uh, welcome to another episode of Life Studied. Uh, it is a monthly podcast that my friend Marintosh, Kaya, and I make, where we um, we, we talk about art yeah. while making art. Uh, <laughs> Marintosh is a professional artist and art model. Um, I am a professional hack, which is kind of a lead into what we'll be talking about today. Yeah. Um, and we are recording here at the campus of the Pennsylvania College of Art and Design, who sponsors the show, specifically the illustration department, uh, of which you were a graduate here. Yeah. And uh, so they're, they're kind enough to sponsor the show, give us the space. Um, so we're very grateful to them. If you're looking for a, uh, a place to study art, check out PCAT. Uh, their website is, is pretty in-depth. They have some upcoming open houses you should check out uh, as of the date of the show, anyway. Um, and it, it's, in a, it's in a cute city called Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Or Lancaster, I'm always corrected for pronouncing it wrong. Um, <laughs> it's on, it's on some list of like top ten places to live or something in the United States. Oh, the city of Lancaster? Yeah, really, which is very cool. So, um, yeah, check out PCAT. Also, uh, the fine folks at Blackwing, they uh, give you pencils to draw with. So I'll have a uh, uh, link in the description if you want to pick up Blackwing pencils. I'm a big fan. Not just because they sponsor me with, with cool stuff. Uh, I've been using their stuff for years. So, Marintosh. Um, so today's subject came about through a conversation. So I was going to talk about a whole different thing with you. Yeah. And um, so I was at the dog park with my boys, and the guy introduced himself to me, and he's like a marketing guy. And uh, he asked what I did. And I told him I was an illustrator, which is always sort of my stock answer. Mm. And he gave me kind of a funny look, which, uh, you know, is always odd to me because I just assume everybody knows what an illustrator is. Yeah. Um, but I think it's so, so broad that no one knows how to nail it down. Mm. Um, mm. And I told him I used to do advertising stuff because he was in a marketing world, so I, I figured he would understand that. But he's still, like, once I was done my whole spiel about <laughs> what I did, he, he goes, oh, you're an artist. Which, then I had to fight the urge to, like, argue with him. Yeah. Because I don't see myself that way. So, for me, there's a really, like, clear line, right? So, you're more, uh, although your training is in uh, figure drawing and illustration, you're more of a fine artist than me, in yeah. my opinion. So. Yeah. An artist is a person, and this is like a very, very limiting definition, but this is how I see it in my head. An artist is a person who um, creates art and then finds the audience for it. Mm. An illustrator is a person who already has an audience and doesn't technically make their art until they've gotten an assignment. Right. And that makes me sound hacky, and, <laughs> and that's fine. I don't care. Um, <laughs> Um, but I realized that like in, in the, I don't know, what do we call them, the civilians, in the civilian world, mm -hmm. uh, the, the non-artists um, out there think that's probably a weird distinction that doesn't make any sense to them. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, you, it's, I, as an artist, I would resonate with your, your desire to like argue with the guy, yeah. like he said, because you have an insight into the genres within the massive art world and how people feel differently, and how that kind of is you know, defined differently depending on who yeah. you talk to. So you kind of want to, it's a sort of a knee-jerk desire to educate. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then also to be like, well, this is where I fit, based on my definition. Yeah. And I think every creative wants to do that, so. I also think I'm, I'm a little too, um, I don't take my work as seriously as, as a lot of illustrators I know do. Mm. And my kids are always yelling at me that I'm too self-deprecating. <laughs> and so there's a part of me that's like, you know, I, I even use the word hack, which is kind of a, a 
Very yeah. self-deprecating. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a four-letter word for artists. Um, but I never I never really cared, so I never took any offense to it. Um, but I guess that's kind of what I want to talk about. Because yeah. is there enough of a difference that we should be splitting hairs? I just realized I have my collar popped up. I'm not trying to be a cool guy. I meant to put my tie on and I forgot. Your hair was hiding. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a real, true difference in the greater culture? And mm. does it matter if there is a difference? Mm. Um, I mean, I don't know about the greater culture. I'm not, I don't try to keep up with the art world, like, a, yeah. a, to me, that's a little too cool for school, like, yeah. oh, I gotta know what the industry is doing, the latest, <laughs> yeah. like, I just, I don't really care, to be honest, Right. Um, because I feel like it's so subjective in how we call ourselves. For example, like, I came, I was really having a hard time picking between fine art and illustration coming to school, Right. to get a degree in that, and it, it was a, a real struggle for me, because of how everyone's definitions were different, and because of how curriculums kind of break it down differently. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, I, I, throughout my 20s, was calling myself an illustrator. Not because of the industry, but because I'm a bit of a word nerd. Right. And to illustrate something like the monks would be to illuminate a story visually. Ah. And I was obsessed with that. Like, okay. kind of the ethos of that, or the philosophy of that. Yeah. So I saw the way I create story visually Right, right. Even if I was doing it for more fine art purposes. That's a great answer. Can I steal that? Yes. <laughs> um, if, you're not, if you're not familiar with what Maritage is talking about, just go Google uh, illustrated or, or illuminated manuscripts. Yeah, like the monks in like, yeah. the Book of Kells or something. Right, you know, where they're, right. They're literally uh, illuminating the words in pictorial right. form. They're, they're giving it a sense of um, something that non-literate people could understand. Right. <laughs> and you've probably all seen it. It looks like, you know, maybe a page from the Bible with illustrations along the yep. outer edge. Or an or, 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 or borders. Yep. Small, what we would call spot illustrations yeah, now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Um, there's a nice collection at the Cloisters in New York, actually. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen uh, And it's in a cloister, so oh, it's in the perfect setting to look at this stuff. That's cool. Uh, yeah. That's a great way to look at it. That's how... I've always come at it, which is why people were confused with me when I'd be like, I'm an illustrator, and I would do book illustration and stuff, but then I'd show them my other work, and they'd be like, this isn't, because I think most people, in my experience, when I told them I was an illustrator, were expecting, like, more modernized editorial and comic yeah. work, and it's yeah. like, I don't do that, yeah. so people, people are going to get confused no matter what you say. I, I agree, and um, <laughs> it's, that's really, really, really intriguing. Because I remember loving, like, you know, I was not as into it as you, uh, but going to the cloisters and looking at these things and going, Christ, like, we're still doing the same exact thing. Yeah. Trying to get the message across to the reader uh, in a way that the words couldn't. Right. So. I mean, this is why we still use the term, you know, uh, uh, pictures worth a thousand words. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. And I still kind of, I have, it's, it's close to my heart that my understanding of the word illustration or illustrator, so because of that distinction right. that I make, so I still, I can't completely divorce myself from it. But I know in like the business world, I have to just say I'm, I'm a you know, visual figurative artist. Right. Because people are like, you're not working for Marvel, what do you Oh, God. No? <laughs> yeah. that, that is also a drag in that. Um, so you have the multiple layers of yeah. I'm an artist or I'm an illustrator, and then um, either one comes with all, all these caveats. Well, yeah. have you shown anywhere? Have you sold anything? Who do you work for? Right. As if any of that like right. validates who you are. Or the new thing is how many followers do you have on Instagram? Yeah, I know, which is so it's such bullshit because yeah. it doesn't really matter at all. Correct. Yeah. Correct. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're about 10 minutes in. You want to yeah, yeah. draw a little bit? Um, I, I'm curious to hear what made you switch over. Like, what made you go from, okay, I'm an illustrator to no, I'm an artist, or a visual figurative artist, more specifically? Yeah, well, a lot of it was a very slow process. In oh, do you want to set the timers? Yeah, I completely forgot. <laughs> 
<laughs> me too. <laughs> that's a good subject. I think maybe that's that's telling. This is asking. Uh, what do you want to start with? Five or two? Uh, let's do two. Okay, I'll give you a chance to warm up. And me. Frankly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll put this here. All right, so what made you, what, what was the switch over? Like, what was the catalyst for going from I'm an illustrator to, uh, to the current definition? It was a gradual process over years where I was, you know, evolving my practice as an illustrator, working with people, not freelancing, and then slowly discovering that my personal tastes were shifting and that right. my personal, um, Preferences and ambitions within the illustrative community were shifting, and, and my response to how the illustration world was shifting was changing as well. It was just, it was just like you know what I, I'm. My sensibility is, and my taste is, is I guess more in line with the way that the uh, visual art or slash you know fine art world is 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 showing up, and I just kind of evolved into a I want to. Produce for my own convictions, and then, yeah. and then you know see what I can do with that. Right. Out of an you know kind of an experimental mindset, but nevertheless, I realized that I can't call myself an illustrator in the strict strictest business kind of sense of the word, and then be producing something that makes people go, what you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I'm seeing doesn't add up to the word and, and what I understand that to be. So. Right. You want to make the things you want to make, you don't want to wait to be told, hey, draw this thing. Right. And although your sensibility is more like an illustrator, it sounds like. Yeah, and I've always really, personally, I've always really kind of walked that line of, of illustrator and fine art, fine artist. Yeah. In, in the way that I create and visually represent stuff. But right. I think in terms of, okay, how am I communicating what I do out in the external world, I just I needed to adapt that. So I, I was like, all right, I'm an, I'm a figurative artist. That's what I'm telling people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that probably makes the most sense. And especially figurative art because that's kind of my my specialty, working with the figure. Right. So I just figured, <laughs> no you pun figured. intended, <laughs> <laughs> that that would be the most the script or clear. Yeah, that's the one that leads to the fewest uh, weird looks of like. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, what are you doing? I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah, because I have had this similar kinds of conversations where you want to debate or argue or educate someone who may be confused about what you're saying as to what you do and why you define it the way you do. Yeah. And it, I can go there, but I've learned that for me personally, it's very exhausting. And I almost yes. sort of get a little depressed about the state of humanity. <laughs> oh, gee, it can get dark. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just... For my own mental health, if you want to say, I just stopped wanting to have too much of a conversation about it. So let I'm, I'm with, with non-artists. I am. I am <laughs> this conversation is not going in. I feel like we could do two episodes like this. I am absolutely intrigued. Like, so why does having to define what you do or what an artist is? Why is that taking to this kind of dark? You know, I don't want this to sound like psychoanalyzing you, but I'm, I'm very curious, <laughs> why does it take you there? Well, it just, it, I mean, obviously it would depend on the person I'm talking to, what their level of um, education is regarding the art world, but depending on that dynamic, it can be, for me, it's just a little tedious, it's a little like, right. uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I could, but I also don't really want to educate you about all of the, the, the subjective and debated breakdowns of terminology in your yeah. world and it's a lot of people don't really care they're just kind of trying to understand whatever you might be telling them right that's kind of what I was I, I guess I'm, I'm digging into this because I'm, I'm curious if it just comes down to um, you love this so much that the idea of explaining it to someone who you kind of suspect doesn't care yeah uh, and doesn't want to hear it all right like what's the point of that and you know Frankly, that makes you that that takes you that much further into the world of fine art, yeah. right? Because I have to explain to these idiots. Sorry, 
these wonderful people. To these civilians. Yeah. No, but like I have to convince people with a checkbook, hey, yeah, yeah. this is why you need me. You're right. And this is what I do. You're right. You're um, right. Actually, that's a part of my transition, I think, is just losing so are interest. You in, oh, no. I sorry, sorry, sorry. Losing, I didn't know if I should start or not. Yeah. Losing interest in like the sales pitch culture of, yes. of, uh, of what is currently or what was at the time that I switched the illustration world. I just didn't want to do that. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe that's part of the definition is that um, so artists, I, I know you have known you a long time, and, and it makes perfect sense. <laughs> like, I, forget the work itself. Knowing you, I, I'm like, this this is not a person that wants to be told, draw this, make it look like that, right? Yes. And, um, yes. Even though you're an illustrator, I, I would, uh, it, like, drop of a hat, I'd hire you to do stuff. But I'd have to hire you to do essentially the stuff you're doing already. Right. Whatever I'm showing that I'm doing. Correct. Be what I, I before, yeah. So in essence, I'm like hiring a, a fine artist to do illustration projects of some sort. And I've been like nagging you for years to make, for instance, like an illustrated book. Um, but I think it comes down to you need a, a deep, and please correct me if I'm full of shit, but uh, I think you need a deeper connection with whoever you're going to do a work this, this project with yeah, yeah we're like i'm okay with these kind of like one night stands of just <laughs> like here i'll sell myself to you for tonight i just no i'm, I'm gone in the morning yeah. <laughs> like leave your leave the money on the end table <laughs> please don't <laughs> that's a great analogy for that though. it's interesting too because art art and creatives are so you know like it's a it's a vulnerability of sorts so yeah like that is and and we're all yeah that, that's exactly right and and we're all training similar well I shouldn't say we are because fine arts and when I was in school my, my degree ironically so this is what's weird is that your degree is in illustration and you're more of a fine artist that's right my degree is in fine art yeah. and I became an illustrator um, but the intimacy thing is is just you can't. You can't fight it. Like we're doing a thing where here's a piece of me. Can you, you know, accept it or not accept it? Give me money for it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's what like your answer is so intriguing to me because it's like, uh, I mean, it's probably a lot more um, pure. I don't know how. I, I, I want to be careful. It doesn't sound like I'm just making my job sound terrible, but I think. <laughs> Because uh, I genuinely love it and I get to do amazing shit, but um, I, I, I'm just intrigued by this idea that, like, you know, I cannot, uh, this isn't a performance for me. I'm going to, you know, give, share a piece of myself, and if you can't, uh, if you can't get it sort of instinctively, then, then I'm not going to explain it to you. And maybe that's the difference that I was trying, I wanted to get across to this guy who was asking what I did, and I, you know. Um, and it's hard to say that where you don't like, man, like uh, where you don't sound self-deprecating and weird, you know, like. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a lot of reasons that we all kind of come to the definitions we do. But for me, there's a large part of it is well, anything I do, even if it's like not just professionally, but for me, I can't do a thing unless I. I'm behind it fully. Yeah. And I'm like yeah. really emotively back it, and because I just I can't fake shit. I can't. Right. I can't be fake. I really, really can't. Like yeah. my face is. You've seen my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we've, we've been in in class where. Uh, so I, I should probably explain this to folks who are new to the show. Mary Taj and I have been working forever uh, together forever, and um, you know, I'm giving a lecture on working with students. And she's modeling, but I always joke that she's sort of the, the, the real resource in the school that, or rather, the classroom that matters. Um, and I have to, and I laugh often because I'm looking at you, <laughs> trying to explain to a student something who's not, you know, the kid's not taking it seriously. And I just see your face, just like, I'm gonna kick this kid's ass. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. You cannot fake it, and maybe that's it. Maybe I'm able to sell it because I can, yeah, I can I, fake it. Yeah. I, which, 
I mean, I don't mean to tell you that, but... No, 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 but there's some truth to it. There's a, there's a quality for me of, like, I have to really believe in whatever, whatever I'm doing and feeling it, and I can't... So I just kind of realized that about myself and, and, and you know, realized that I couldn't uh, bring myself to the table fully in a way that I would, would have been needed had I been staying in the illustration world. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, that and that's great. You should. To both ends. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm, I'm making all these sort of like I'm making myself sound terrible, but uh, I think there's some truth to it. Like the ability to. I don't even know if maybe I should be careful about saying faking it, but you know you're sort of. <sighs> I mean, you kind of are, I guess. Sometimes, or sometimes you're taking gigs where um, you have to convince the person that. You're, you're genuinely into this thing, if, even if you're not. And that's the dividing line between uh, fine art, illustration, what I got. And, and there's no way to say where I don't sound more and more like a, no, like well, a prostitute. Way <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it is a little like the, you know, the, the strip club thing where like, oh man, I think she's really into me. <laughs> or, you know, you just have a 20. In your <laughs> Oh my god. You know, I think part of it too is that, you know, illustration, one thing I love about it, although I'm not good at it, is it's very collaborative. Okay, yeah. Or it can be. Yeah. You know, there's discussions, there's dialogue, there's conversations around what's going to be represented, how it's going to be represented. Yeah. There's a negotiation between, you know, the artist and the art director or whatever. And so, and for me, personally, this is getting very, you know, this is just purely my own personal where I'm at in life, but I'm not, I'm not good at collaborating. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even want to be necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, and, and, and that's fine, right? Yeah, like, you need to kind of know yourself enough to know where your services will be best suited. As right, artists, right. Or a visual creative. You know, and we're suspiciously probably to some folks, not talking much about training. Yeah. Um, and that's because I think in a lot of worlds, the training can, depending on the school, uh, can be the same, right? Like my anatomy class that I teach is not different for the fine artists uh, versus the illustrators. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some schools, the school I went to, uh, there really wasn't an illustration department per se. There was a couple of classes you could take. But, um, Training is one of those things that can be very subjective with fine art, so it's hard to say that the training is the same, um, but it's similar, right? We're talking figure drawing, we're talking the study of anatomy, composition, color, all that stuff. We're using essentially the same toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's just, a, to, and that's why if you're out there wondering, like, why are they talking about illustration when they're supposed to be talking about what's an artist, um, and not including the the, the training, and that's why, because yeah. we're, we're not talking about uh, does a tool make an artist? Does, like this, this person paints, therefore that person's an artist. That pair, this other person uses Photoshop, so they're not. And that's not at all, at least I think with us, yeah. what, the, uh, what the definition, where the line is. Um, do you want to do another two? Um, yeah, we'll do five, if you're okay with that. Yeah, I think that's important as well. Um, I'm just gonna hold this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, said something that was interesting. I, I mean, there, there are further. We're talking, I guess, about a bigger umbrella of distinction between, yeah. you know, fine artist or, or illustrator. But then there's like artist versus painter. Right. Or, you know, Oh the artist God. versus painter thing is hilarious to me, and I don't mean to offend anyone who's passionate about the, the title of painter, but it's just, it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> I was like, talking what? this about my part, or talking about this with my partner, and he, and he doesn't get it. He's a, as we, as we are jokingly, lovingly saying, a civilian. Right. And he's like, if you're a painter and you tell me you're a painter, I'm going to think that you are an industrial like painter. Like you paint yeah, houses. you paint houses yeah. and stuff. Right. Yes. <laughs> He's right. He's right. It's like, if you're an artist who uses paint, I mean, that's just a tool that you use, but you're an art, like what you make is art. Correct. And I think that's something I mentioned earlier to you. Like, people say, to me, if you're an artist, you're a type of person who makes art. Like, you yes. make a type of art. 
Right. But there right. are lots of ways that you can break that down. I don't think we need to specify. I'm a, I'm a graphitist. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, God, and we do that. I mean, I remember being in school. I, I'm old enough that um, there was a time when there was discussion of, like, masculine versus feminine arts. Really? Yeah, and wow. they would say stuff like, um, you know, Michelangelo didn't like painting because he considered it to be feminine. Uh, sculpting was a more masculine art, and that was what he really pursued, and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, like... Some of that was debunked uh, after they, they cleaned the Sistine Chapel and they found like all those, because they would say, oh, look at his color palettes. Mm. They're muted, they, they, uh, they feel like stone in their like mm -hmm. sort of hue. Uh -huh. uh, and then they cleaned them. Yeah. And they looked at all the colors and like, Jesus Christ, these look like Crayola colors. Um, <laughs> so much for like the, the macho color palette thing. That's hilarious. So, so yeah, that, those distinctions are so damn goofy. Like, well, and again, I should be careful that I don't offend real artists. I'm just a hack. What do I know? But, um, but yeah, it does. You're right. That's a funny. That's a funny, extra distinction we put on ourselves as artists, especially the people who don't give a shit. Like, ultimately, right? Like we're we're talking to normal. Whether we're illustrators or artists, we're gonna have to sell something to someone. Yeah. And. Um, some people are going to care. I get that. There's lots of like high art, highbrow uh, art collectors, but ultimately they're you know outside of ourselves and a few small people within the fine arts business. Most people just worry like, is, does it match the couch? Is it growing in value? Yeah. Uh, or nowadays, can I hide money <laughs> by buying this piece? Right. Um, so yeah. I mean, there's there's the highbrow in every, you know, yeah. breakdown in every definition. You know, there's the highbrow painter versus the painter who's like, yeah, I, I like oil, but I'm not, you know, aristocratic about it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. We used to also say, I don't know if this is even still a term, but I remember being in art history classes and they would talk about primitives versus uh, the, the folks that are trained. They would literally freely throw that word around for an untrained painter was primitive? called primitive. Yeah. Wow. Isn't that wild? Like, um, you know, it's kind of the um, the music equivalent of like like folk music, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But it was it was kind of looked down on. Although there was a period where, you know, it was like looked at like like in this kind of condescending, quaint way. Mm. Like, oh, look at these great untrained artists. How quaint. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's funny. I kind of, again, for me with words, like I kind of like the primitive associated with wild, like as in undomesticated. Yes. I, that's kind of cool. I'm yeah, say. yeah. And that's probably, I mean, but then if you use that term, it probably would also be a little bit better. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, you're an undomesticated <laughs> uh, artist. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the point is, is that we're, we're splitting the hair and then splitting it again. Right. And ultimately, you know, the way people outside of us see it is, is are, are, does your job entail you using a calculator or not, or a computer or not? <laughs> um, yeah, so. I, think, I think a lot of normal people will, will just, like you said, that guy was like, oh, you're an artist. Yeah. They, they could understand that that is like this broad distinction. Yeah. And it's clear and clean, yeah. and, and it's not a complicated description or a, a definition of something. Yeah, I so. think it's funny that you wanted to separate yourself from that. Oh, I so wanted to. To me, it's, it's like so artist bad. is the heading, and then under there, you've got illustrator or fine yeah. artist or sculptor or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think also, like, I'm, I'm leery of um, starting with artists, although that probably would make the most sense, because then the next question is always, um, Oh, where do you show? What are you selling? Or you know, some some version of that. And I just don't want to have that conversation either. You know? Yeah, I, I get it. I'm right there with you on that. <laughs> but it doesn't matter really what your definitions are because depending on who you're talking to, you're gonna have some version of a conversation you don't want to have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So that's the, maybe that's the point of the show is we don't want to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> Just let us go draw pictures. Don't don't ask questions. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, that's why artists are the way they are, but like on the outskirts. Yes, yes. Um, it's ironically, I remember being in art school and having this conversation, but from a different angle. And I was in the fine arts program, and it was somebody poo pooing illustration or something like that. And, and this is before I was a working illustrator, so I didn't necessarily have the dog in a fight, although I wanted to, to work as an illustrator. Um, and I made the argument, I was like, dude, you know, all these guys you worship, Michelangelo or, or whoever, like, they, they all had uh, patrons, right? Yeah. They all had. Yeah. Um, somebody who was saying, I'll give you money if you make this church pretty. Right. And uh, I don't know that that's different from most illustration gigs. No, not at all. I yeah. wouldn't say it. I mean, that's why for me, the, the line between, it's such a common row with the, the fight between fine artist and illustrator. Yes. And I think that that line is just so, so, so fine. It sometimes doesn't even exist. You right. Know? And for me anyway. And that's why I, I just kind of chuckle at the, the debate is like, Fine artist, illustrator, we've all wanted to <laughs> have yeah. a livelihood off of our skills. Right. I mean, I remember listening to a, a lecture thing about Picasso, and mm -hmm. they were saying, you know, th so there's this like fantasy that they never know what's going to be a masterpiece, and you just, it, it, it hits them like lightning, and they make the masterpiece, and then after the fact, we all go, wow, look at this, this genius. And this uh, art historian was let, was uh, arguing that that's horseshit, and we can prove it because um, you can tell when an artist has used expensive materials versus kind of throwaway cheap stuff. Yes. And the implication being that the uh, more expensive, high-end uh, materials meant that this person knew I, I this I'm going to do something that's worth the extra expense. And I'm going to be able to sell it for more because it's going to be seen in this way. Right. Yeah. So you know, it, it's, and I understand that the fine art world benefits from this kind of romanticizing and, and myth building, and but it kind of messes up. It just it, it puts so much bullshit into the, the yeah. world that it's hard to, uh, to to extricate what's fact and what's fiction. Yeah, I agree. This pose is insane, by the way. No one's going to understand what the hell I'm drawing. <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm understanding it, frankly. <laughs> so, do we have a definition then? Do we know what, what's an artist? I mean, we've thrown around a bunch of definitions. Yeah. I still think, for me, I think the easiest one is just, like I said, uh, a person who creates their art without a defined audience in mind. Um, that way we sort of take the dollar amount out. We don't make it about, um, you know, this. you're an artist if you sell paintings kind of nonsense. Um, and an illustrator is a person who has either a client or, or a person, a patron that's saying, this is the kind of thing I need for this project. Can you do it? And then we use essentially the same skills as maybe a fine artist that's figurative um, to execute on those ideas. Yeah, I think the skill sets are fairly across the board. Yeah. Um, then just it's just a matter of the intention of the work and who's involved with the work or right. who's making the work. And it's different. Um, but I would argue that you know, especially nowadays, more fine art or. Uh, um, Self-driven artists are producing art to have, you know, to cultivate a, a community or um, an audience that can basically be sort of dependable patrons. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's also this sort of movement with, um, I'm going to call it, there's only like 15 seconds left, so I pose. Oh, okay. if you want. Um, I think there's this movement towards essentially coming up with the product yourself, yeah. not waiting for a client, not waiting for a budget, right. um, and, and funding, self-funding it in some way, right? yeah. so, which I think is amazing. That, that's where we finally can sort of bridge the gap between stuff like what you do and stuff what I do. Like the, I mentioned earlier, nagging you to death <laughs> about making an art book. 
you've already made the art. I'd love to see you make a product out of it now. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, is it that different from being an illustrator um, slash fine artist? Like, is there really a big difference then, you know? Yeah, I don't think so, other than just, you know, you're doing all the work yourself as opposed to giving it to someone to make it into a, yeah. a product, like a, you know. With that said, if you're in the comments section, uh, you, I, nag Marintosh to make an art book, please. <laughs> she won't see me. I think it's partly why you won't do it. It's because it feels like I'm saying, hey, you should do this thing. And you're like, you know what, you can kick rocks. I don't give <laughs> shit anybody tells me to do <laughs> I do. I, 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 it's not that I don't want to. It's that I've got things i got to figure out on my end. Yeah, I, I, the past I, I, few days, or not few days, the past few years have been really uh, grief riddled. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, no, I don't, I'm just thinking of it. I know, I understand. I'm, As on, a fan, I'm on board with that concept. I really am. As a fan, I'm, I'm, I'm excited by the potential. And if you're out there and you're like, like you, should, you should absolutely go check out Mary Tosh's art. It's incredible. Saying that because she's my friend. Aww. Well, just know if you do that, I am um, completely redoing my website. So Are you really? It's old, it's got old work, and I haven't updated it in forever, and I don't like the way it functions and all of that. So I have, well, I have they should go to your Patreon. because you're, Or, you know what? If you don't want to jump into a Patreon, sign up for her newsletter because you're posting stuff every Saturday uh, with your thoughts and your art. Yeah, but the sketchbook is, is uh, shared exclusively to the email list, so I'll have to. that's where the new stuff is, mostly. I'll have to post a link in the uh, description maybe for where they can sign up for it. If yeah, I mean, everything's all, basically, if you go to my Instagram, then, you know, okay. how Instagram works is the links and links in bio, and you can subscribe to the uh, email right And your, your Instagram is, uh, since we're already talking about it. Studio underscore M-A-I-R. I mean, as an artist, uh, we might as well mention this part too. Um, do you resent having to do some of that like self-promotional stuff? No, I can actually get pretty into it, but for me, okay. it's a matter of, um, like, I ebb and I flow, you know, yeah. which is all about uh, my brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel the most, I, I, I really genuinely am proud of my work, and I feel uh, fulfilled by it, and I'm, I'm happy to be an illustrator. I do admit, though, that, like, I feel the most, I've made the joke about, uh, you know, that making myself sound like a prostitute, but... <laughs> Uh, I feel the most like that with all the extra promotional stuff you have to be doing. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's sort of the, uh, the you know, me having to wear the skirt and walk the streets kind of. That's, I'm going to drive this metaphor into the ground, but, <laughs> and I'm probably offending people. Please forgive me. I, this is all just joking. But um, that's the part where I feel the worst about being an illustrator, where I'm like having that, even just being online, frankly. You know, I yeah. um, I fought it for a little bit, and I had you know friends that were like, you gotta, you have to be where your competition is. It's just, it's just that simple. Um, and unfortunately, illustration is a very competitive business, so you, you really can't afford to just say, no, I'm gonna do my thing and stay over here, right? Um, because you know, people eat your lunch, and <laughs> maybe that's okay, um, depending on the world you're in, but. You there was, I started my career with my family, so there was never a point where I didn't have to be earning, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. But it's the least fun part of the job, for sure. It is. It's also the part that, you know, I'll be at an event and kids will ask, you know, if they don't, they're not familiar with my work, they'll ask about me and I see them jump on their phones look me up on Instagram, looking very cynical, and then all of a sudden their eyes light up, and I realize they were here while they found it. 
and now I'm valid because I have a whatever, however many followers, you know. Yeah, it's true. Some people are really thinking in that way, which is yeah. sad because yeah. it's just essentially not necessary. Yeah. All, All right. right, so we can maybe, what, about 40 minutes? Okay. Want to cut it there or? Sure. Okay. Whatever you want to do. Um, want so, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's almost 12. We have class in a half an hour. Um, you know what, let's do one more since you're sitting. Okay. One more drawing just to kind of... Can you see anything or should I move? That, that's fine, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll do one more and just sort of wrap up our thoughts and then and we'll cut from there. Um, but anyway, so... So maybe all of these definitions that have been thrown around will inspire the listeners to feel out where they're, where they fit, where they yes. resonate. I don't know if there can, I don't think there can be any one definition that like we, we can all agree with. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with your definition and I think it makes sense. But it's very limiting, frankly, like, and I'm aware of that when I give it, you know. Well, I mean, like, it depends on what your, like, your definition makes sense to me, but that's not what I would use to define me, you know. Right. So it's like, you can agree with stuff, but also be like, but there's something, there's another perspective to right. factor in. Honestly, and I'd love to hear people's thoughts. Like, so drop that stuff into the comments. Maybe um, you'll hit it from a different angle that we weren't thinking of, and it's something we can come back to. Because I get the feeling this is the kind of subject that I'm going to want to talk about more. Because it, it's it's there's something happening with visual art, like where um, there's kind of a movement to like make it a commodity more than anything else. I hear more and more people talk about being content creators versus artists. Uh, um, I hear more and more uh, people talking about, you know, what's the point of learning to draw when we can use AI. Mm -hmm. uh, people seem like quite literally flabbergasted that, you know, you have an idea in your head you wanna, you wanna make real, so you just spend your life training for it, and, mm -hmm. and that seems crazy to them. So. This is a subject like, you know, because we're all, we're talking about in terms of what we make, um, but obviously there's the whole movement in fine art of, you know, the shop putting something together that from, from the garbage and saying, this is art. Mm. And do we argue that that's not now? Mm. You know, so uh, if you have thoughts about this, I'd love to hear them. We'd both love to hear them. Maybe more me than Meritage, because Meritage is <laughs> take outside opinions. <laughs> I mean, you know, we can debate. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, drop drop your, your definition of artist in the comments. Please be nice though. Like don't yell at each other. Yeah. So um, also, since we're sort of closing up the show here, um, where can we find you? So I, we already mentioned Instagram, but your Patreon's getting to be more and more important to your work, correct? Yeah, that's where I'm, I'm also changing that around this year. We're gonna do more on there, so that's exciting. Awesome. Um, it's kind of, it was originally just um, me as an art model providing reference right. for figurative artists. And the joke is it's figurative art reference by a figurative artist. Right, for figurative which artists. makes you very, very unique and suited for that. Very I'm niche. Sure. Um, but because I am also a figurative artist, I'm showing more and more about my own work on there, and I kind of uh, provide some gesture drawing demos and stuff like that, and working out, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a techie, so I have to figure out the yeah. whole like, video thing, so working around <laughs> with that. But, but yeah, there'll be more of my own practice on there. It's kind of where I discuss the practice, right. less about the results, more about the practice. Right. Um, and I'll put a link in the, in the description for yeah. you folks that want to join. You'll, you'll get this podcast on either of our Patreons uh, a week early. Um, we're also thinking that we may open it up for questions or even maybe like an actual live show uh, where people can check it out, you know, while we're actually doing it and drop questions. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you support the show, you get it early, and uh, you, you'll get more content than you'll know what to do with in terms of artwork from both <laughs> of us. Um, there's a lot of Patreons where people don't post a whole hell of a lot of stuff. 
Mm -hmm. I think neither of us is guilty of that. So, yeah. I'm hearing from a lot of people that like, um, you know, because our, our, this show is kind of weird, it's, you're expecting to see two people talking with microphones in front of them. <laughs> um, hearing our voices and just seeing a person draw, it's like uh, ASMR, like visual yeah. ASMR for some folks, at least that's what I'm hearing. So I think it's kind of a cool uh, change of pace for a podcast, personally. Yeah, it's a little more casual and relaxed yeah. and fits the niche, I think. All right, and that's it. We'll cut it off there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for supporting the show. Um, as I said, I'll mention, uh, sorry, I will put uh, links for both of our Patreons in the description. Once again, thank you to the folks at uh, Pennsylvania College of Art Design's illustration department for sponsoring the show. And, uh, and the folks at Blackwing for sending me cool pencils. And uh, mm -hmm. that's it. You want to say anything before we cut off? No, I'm good. Yeah. All right. I'm good. See you next uh, month. I can this without thinking anything else to it. I hope the audio stayed. Got it. So. All right. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>